A good deal of blood must have soaked through, must it not? Oh, undoubtedly it must. Then you'll be surprised to hear that there is no stain on the woodwork to correspond. No stain? But there must be. So you would say. Fact remains. Listen. But the underside is as stained as the upper. It must have left a mark. Now I will show you the explanation. There is a second stain, but it does not correspond with this one. Uh, Dr. Watson, will you take that side of the carpet? Now we will move round in an anti-clockwise direction. What I want to know is, Mr. Holmes, who shifted the carpet? Strayed, who was on duty the day after the murder? Uh, the day after? McPherson. He's out there now. Take my advice. Examine him carefully. I'll get him. Don't do it before us. We'll wait here. Tell him you know someone has been here. Press him. Tell him a full confession is his only chance of forgiveness. Exactly as I tell you. But, George, if he knows, I'll have it out of him. Macpherson, how's the family? Very well, thank you, sir. Well, come on out with it. Let these gentlemen hear of your inexcusable conduct. Well, I meant no harm, sir, I'm sure. This young woman came to the door answering an advertisement about typewriting. It was mistook the house, she said. Well, we got talking, sir, you know how it is. It's a bit lonely when you're out there on duty all day. What happened, Macpherson? Well, sir, we got talking about the crime. She had read about it in the paper, she said, and wanted to see what it was done, so I saw no harm in letting her have a wee keek. She got just about in the door there, spotted that mark in the carpet, and down she dropped on the floor and lay for dead. And no wonder. Go on, Macpherson. Well, sir, I was away around at the ivy plant for some brandy, and by the time I had brought it back, the young woman had... Well, she wasn't here any more. She had recovered and was off. Well, ashamed of herself as like as not, and dared to not face me. Macpherson, did you move the carpet? No, sir, I only straightened it out. You see, she'd fell on it, and the polished floor being slippery. Let that be a lesson to you, Constable, that you can't deceive me. No doubt you thought your breach of duty would never be discovered. Yet a mere glance at that carpet was enough to convince me that someone had been admitted to this room. Lucky for you, my man, that nothing's missing. Otherwise, you'd find yourself in Queer Street. I do Watson, what are we doing here? We have work elsewhere. Another failure in your cap, Mr. Ray. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Good Lord, Mr. Holmes. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> 
Have you solved it? Hardly, Watson, hardly. Gentlemen wish to speak to you, my lady. They do not have an appointment. Who are they, Bates? Uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes and a Dr. Watson, my lady. Very well. You may show them in. Very well, my lady. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, my lady. Mr. Holmes, this is surely most unfair and ungenerous on your part. I have desired, as I have explained, to keep my visit to you a secret, and yet you compromise me by coming here and so showing there are business relations between us. Unfortunately, madam, I have no possible alternative. I've been commissioned to recover an immensely important document. I must ask you, therefore, to be kind enough to place it in my hands. You insult me, Mr. Holmes. Do not ring, Lady Hilda. If you work with me, I can arrange everything. If you work against me, I must expose you. You're trying to frighten me. It's not a very manly thing, Mr. Holmes, to come here and browbeat a woman. You say you have something to tell me. Very well, I give you five minutes. A one is an hour, Lady Hilda. I know of your visit to Eduardo Lucas, of your giving him this letter, of your ingenious return to the room on the evening after the murder, and of the manner in which you took this letter from his hiding place under the carpet. I have kept this because I thought it might be useful. The policeman recognized you. Once again, Mr. Holmes, I tell you, you're under some absurd illusion. Oh, I am so sorry, Lady Hilda. I have done my best. But I see that I'm in vain. Ah, is Mr. Trelawney Hope at home? He'll be back at half past twelve, sir. Then we have a quarter of an hour. We will wait. Here. Mr. Holmes, spare me. For heaven's sake, don't tell him. I love him so, I would not bring one shadow on his life, and this, I know, would break his noble heart. We have not an instant to lose. Where is the letter? Here it is. Wish to heaven I'd never seen it. At the dispatch box? With my husband. Wherever he goes, he takes it with him. <laughs> We have only a few minutes left. Now, Lady Helder, I'm going far to screen you. 